Welcome to Biz Lounge. On today's show, we'll talk about the startup community and speak to a man who's looking to invest not only in startups in India, but all over the world. Dave McClure, the founding partner of 500 Startups, a venture capital firm based in the heart of Silicon Valley that has invested in about 460 startups across the globe, joins us today. Dave, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. But before we begin our chat, here's a quick look at what 500 Startups is all about. 500 Startups is a venture capital fund headquartered in Silicon Valley, uh, California. We run an accelerator program twice a year that invests in about 30 companies every six months. Um, but we also invest in seed funds, uh, uh, seed companies all over the world, probably over 100 every year. Uh, we've been operating since uh, summer of 2010. We've been around for almost three years now. I'm a big fan of Dr. Seuss and uh, a book called The 500 Hats of Bartholomew Cubbins. And uh, originally, 500 Hats was my consulting company that helped uh, startups uh, figure out all the hats that they were wearing. So once we started uh, moving over to the investing side, we decided to keep the number 500, but uh, change it to 500 startups. So 500 has invested in approximately 460 companies in the last three years. Um, probably about 100 of those are outside the U.S. We invest a lot uh, in, in a lot of companies, uh, small checks generally speaking, between fifty dollars to $100,000 U.S. on the first check. So 500 has decided that there's lots of opportunities all over the world and a few of the places where we're focusing on right now are India, Mexico and Brazil where we've already invested in over 10 companies in each of those geographies. Uh, we're also starting to look at places like China, um, Southeast Asia and probably the Middle East. You've been meeting with a lot of startups while you've been here. Yeah. Tell us about some of the most interesting ideas that you've okay. seen while you've been here. Well, probably one of the most interesting uh, was a company we invested in called ZipDial, uh, which uh, takes advantage of missed calls, which uh, prior to maybe two years ago I knew nothing about over here. <laughs> uh, but there's literally been hundreds of millions of uh, missed calls uh, placed through ZipDial. A uh, couple of other companies we saw that I thought were really amazing, uh, Redbus is a company that we saw when we were in Bangalore. And uh, just really kind of amazing how many people and uh, bus trips they service on a regular basis. It's mm -hmm. uh, really down to an incredible level of detail about how they reserve and provide information on the buses and patterns and drivers. So mm -hmm. it's really kind of a uniquely Indian solution. And can you tell us a little bit about the investments that you have made here? How many investments have you made so far? Uh, I guess in the last year, about eight. Uh, mm -hmm. I was an investor in SlideShare personally uh, several years back, and mm -hmm. uh, they actually were acquired by LinkedIn uh, last year for about $120 million. Mm -hmm. And um, we've made eight investments in about the last nine months, and we'll probably be doing about 10 to 20 uh, a year going forward, I think. Mm -hmm. A few of the other companies, uh, we had four that came over to our accelerator program in Silicon Valley for uh, several months. Mm -hmm. Uh, a couple of those were a company called Trade Briefs uh, mm -hmm. that provides email newsletters for professionals here in India. Uh, over 400,000 people have already signed up for that service and they provide education and uh, information about topics in, um, in the white collar professional business and industries. Um, another company called Gaze Metrics uh, does sort of like face detection for brand images so they can find the uh, product images for different uh, products when they might appear in social media, either on, say, Facebook or Twitter or on other services, and help inform the owners of those brands how their images are being used, mm -hmm. and whether they're being used positively or negatively, and whether they're growing quickly based on some uh, kind of viral story or something. And what are some of the most promising sectors that you're seeing in India right now? Well, I think uh, an area that we are very interested in is uh, around education and other products and services for moms and families and kids. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been doing a lot of those investments uh, in the U.S. and all over the world. Mm -hmm. Probably made about 20 or 30 investments in those areas. Mm -hmm. um, and I think similarly here in India, uh, a lot of services that are focusing on you know, women and moms and parents as the customer are probably going through quite a bit of growth here. So mm. um, education is one of those. Um, probably fashion 
and beauty products, maybe another one, um, products for the home. Mm -hmm. uh, so we think that that, again, as the growing middle class here uh, has more disposable income and is able to buy other uh, types of products, we think that that's going to be a big growth area in the future. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about your business model? You're sure. investing in about 460 companies <laughs> right now. Yeah. So how many of those do you expect will be successful? Well, so the uh, funny thing about investing in startups is that most of them fail. Uh, and so you have to build an interesting investment thesis where, you know, 80%, 60 to 80% of the things you invest in probably go to zero within a couple of years. Mm. Um, so that really requires that the small percentage that you do invest in have hopefully significant outcomes, maybe uh, 10 to 20x or better returns. Mm -hmm. um, so the way that we kind of think about investing is usually that perhaps 20% of our investments might uh, return 5x or better, and then maybe another 5% might return 20x or better. Mm -hmm. um, probably the rest of them uh, at best maybe return a little bit of capital, but may uh, fail outright or have no return whatsoever. But right now, probably at about We've been doing about 150 investments a year or more. Uh, each fund is probably about 250 investments. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully out of those 250, maybe 50 survive to some kind of positive return. Mm -hmm. And maybe 10 of those uh, become companies that might be worth 100 million or more. Have you seen any successes so far since the fund has been around? Yeah, we've had a few. Actually, last uh, summer, a uh, company we invested in called Wildfire Interactive was acquired by Google for about $350 million. Mm -hmm. um, that was actually a company I invested in when I was still running the Facebook fund uh, originally in 2009. Mm -hmm. And then once we started 500 startups, I invested uh, in 2010. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the biggest outcome we've seen to date. Mm -hmm. um, but a couple of other companies that I think look like they're doing well. Uh, Twilio provides uh, voice and SMS services for businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, SendGrid provides email deliverability for business. Mm -hmm. And then a company called MakerBot out of New York uh, does 3D printing. And any interesting trends that you're seeing in India in the startup space? I think there's going to be a substantial growth in small business India. You know, people say running five to 100 person businesses. Um, and those folks will be moving a lot of their services online over the next five to 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll be a huge opportunity to go after. Um, I don't know how quickly maybe the rest of the education sector and other parts might come online, but mm -hmm. that also could be interesting for us. Mm -hmm. And what's unique about venture capital in India as compared to other developing nations? Well, I think one of the challenges for venture capital in any developing nation is that there's so much other growth going on. Mm -hmm. uh, in the U.S., venture capital is investing in um, high growth rate industries relative to the rest of the the market. In India and other places, uh, the rest of the market is actually also growing quite rapidly. Mm -hmm. um, so returns on uh, real estate and other more you know, mundane businesses are actually quite good. Mm. Um, so I think venture capital has the challenge of trying to keep up with other uh, rates of return and still mm -hmm. being able to tolerate a high rate of failure due to you know, small businesses or early stage businesses, I should say, having those failure rates. We have to take a quick break here. Sure. But stay with us, we'll be right back.